Hi everyone and welcome to another Psych Student video. In this series we're going to be looking at different MCQs which come up in the area of psychiatry. So that's multiple choice questions from a range of psychiatry areas and will help you to identify which areas you're really good at already and which you're not so sure of. So the first question, a section 5.2 of the Mental Health Act in England lasts for how long? A. 12 hours. B. 36 hours. C. 6 hours. Or D. 72 hours. E. 24 hours. So in this case, a section 5.2 is done by doctors and can last up to 72 hours. And this gives time for a mental health act to take place. You must be an inpatient on a ward for this to take place, which means that the A&E department can't be a place that you implement a 5.2, as you're not technically an inpatient there. Comparatively, a section 5.4 can be done by nurses and lasts up to six hours. So in this case, the answer is 72 hours. Question two, which type of dementia is associated with movement problems and sensitivity to antipsychotics. There's A, Alzheimer's dementia, B, vascular dementia, C, Lewy body dementia, or D, frontotemporal dementia. In this case, the answer is Lewy body dementia, and this is a type in which Lewy bodies can be found within the brain. Common symptoms alongside memory troubles include slowness, gait imbalance and Parkinsonian movement features. Many people experience hallucinations or autonomic nervous system problems such as blood pressure dropping on standing. They're often more sensitive to medication such as antipsychotics and their side effects. The next question is which benzodiazepine of the following list has the shortest half-life? Lorazepam, diazepam, chlordiazepoxide or clonazepam? In this case, the answer is lorazepam, and this is often used in situations where a shorter half-life is of benefit, whereas longer-acting benzos such as chlordiazepoxide may be of more help, for example, in alcohol withdrawal. Question four. Again, on the topic of benzodiazepines, which of the following benzos and hypnotics should be avoided in patients with liver failure? A. Lorazepam. B. Oxazepam. C. Temazepam. D. Diazepam. Or E. Zopiclone. All will have to be considered from a risk benefit perspective as they'll all not be completely without risk and most should be avoided when liver function is very severely impaired. However, longer acting ones such as diazepam should generally be avoided where possible. So benzos and hypnotics with a shorter half-life are generally safer. So from this list, the one to avoid would be diazepam. And finally, for question five, what key investigation must be completed before giving the medication haloperidol? A, a full blood count, B, an ECG, C, a urea and electrolyte measurement, D, a CT head, or E, an MRI head. In this case, the key investigation to commence, if you can, before starting haloperidol would be an ECG. This will show you the QTC measurement and is particularly important if you're using haloperidol, for example, in a rapid tranquilization type of situation. It's really important to weigh up the risks and benefits of use of haloperidol. And you might wish to choose a less QTC prolonging type of antipsychotic if unable to complete a tracing. So in summary, this video has covered five key psychiatry MCQs, focusing particularly on medications, legal aspects and dementia types today. Hopefully you knew some of the answers already or have learned something new. Thank you.